I get approached about reviewing battery power stations from time to time and I picked this one from Ugreen because it's got a handle on top which means I can pick it up with one hand because it only weighs 25 pounds. And that is luggable but not light compared to these other brands of power stations. This one's got two handles and you really need both those handles to pick it up. And this one has got wheels on the back and a little handle on here to lug it around like a suitcase because you don't want to pick that one up. These ones can put out more power and have more battery capacity than the Ugreen one here. But uh, this one with 1200 watts max output and a kilowatt hour of capacity is suitable for most things already. They can handle up to 2500 watt devices using U-Turbo mode. So let's monitor what's coming out of this thing and overload it with some space heaters to see what happens. It's idling and putting out 120 volts and a nice sine wave for the waveform. Let's plug in one space heater. This one here, that one is set to 600 watts. And now this says it's putting out 609 watts. Voltage is still the same. Waveform is still a sine wave. Kilowatt says 603 watts. So pretty close, this says 605 watts right now. Let's plug in a second space heater, this one here. So now both of these 600 watts each. This says 1207 watts. Kilowatt says 1190, oh, about the same, jumps around a bit. Um, voltage is 119.4, so it's dropped just a tiny bit and we still have a nice waveform. So that is running at capacity. Now let's add another space heater, this heat dish that uses a thousand watts. So now we have 2200 watts worth of heaters plugged in and kilowatt says 1282 watts, this says 1280 watts. So much less than it's supposed to be and that's because it's dropped the voltage to 90 volts. Still getting a nice sine wave but at a reduced voltage. Okay, let's add another heater. This one here, this one draws 500 watts. We'll plug this one in and watch the uh, waveforms. And that got a little bit smaller and then it stopped and this guy's saying overload. So basically the U-Turbo mode was exceeded by having 600, 600, 1000 and 500. So probably goes up to 2500 watts as they say or 2500 watts worth of devices certainly doesn't put out that much it only put out just over 1200 watts so it's nice that if it's overloaded moderately it'll just reduce the voltage a bit instead of conking out so if you plug an 1800 watt blow dryer into it it'll just run at 1200 watts instead but power tools represent particular challenges for inverter power stations like this because when they start up they use a lot more current than they're rated for so this belt sander is rated to use 6 amperes, but on starting up it's a lot more. So let's watch the output waveform when I start this belt sander. And you can see that waveform got a little bit funny looking when it started up. And that's because starting up this draws a lot more current than it's rated for. Now the inverter was still able to kind of handle it, but the waveforms look funny. This big angle grinder is rated for 11 amperes and it was able to just barely get it up to speed so I think that's right at the limit. And now with my big Makita circular saw this one is rated to use 1400 watts. So that was overloaded. I think the Ugreen could actually run this saw if only I could get the saw up to speed. So I'm going to do an experiment. I'll spin the saw up off of mains power and then switch it to the U-Green to see if it keeps it running. Well that worked pretty good until I got too aggressive with the cutting speed. But realistically I can't say that it works with a circular saw because it can't start it up. Doesn't work with this big belt sander either or any of my other circular saw. But it does power up these tools. Uh, jigsaw, my big sawzall, big angle grinder, small angle grinder, smaller belt sander, orbital sander, all of my routers, heat gun, that sort of thing. But trying it with other tools around my shop, uh, not the sander, not this sander, not the bandsaw. This it will power, my small drill press. 
not the jointer, not the planer, not this bandsaw, not the big dust collector, but uh, these tools that will power this bench grinder, the buffing wheel, the small strip sander, this grinder thingy, and my scroll saw. That said, even these larger power stations will have difficulty starting some of my induction motor based tools. So like this bandsaw, or the dust collector back here, or the table saw, that sort of thing. These big power tools, especially ones with induction motors, they're just hard on inverter based devices. So overall, this thing is actually doing pretty good for its size. Next I want to see how much capacity this has, so I'm going to let it charge to 100% before I do that test. Right now it says it's charging 826 watts. It won't charge at its maximum rate when it's getting close to full, which it is. So I'm going to draw it down using this space heater set at 350 watts and I'll log the power using a smart plug, monitoring it from a computer here. So, so far zero watts out. Let's turn this on. And this says 364 watts out. And this measures every 10 seconds. It says 355 watts, uh, fairly close. This has been running now for an hour and a bit now. And the box is warm and I can feel the fan is running, but it's a nice and quiet fan. It's also a relatively large fan. And that's very nice compared to this other brand, which has got four tiny little fans and those really whine once you put a lot of load on the power station. And graphing the data, it held steady at around 700 watts until near the end when it dropped the voltage a bit as it was running out of power. We got a total of 872 watt hours out, but the battery pack is supposed to be 1024 watt hours. And let's charge it up again. It should be able to get to 80% charge in 50 minutes. Charging at 877 watts. 15 minutes in, we're charging at 1100 watts, so that's a good rate. Been charging for exactly 50 minutes now, and it just hit 80%, oh, 81%. So past that one. And graphing that, it started out slow with the battery nearly empty, then motoring along at 1100 watts. This here is the 50 minute 80% point. After about an hour, it dropped the rate quite a bit because topping off that last bit in a lithium battery has to be done slowly. Now a faster rate of discharge at 1030 watts using this heat dish and again measuring how much energy I get out of it. And that fan is running a little bit faster now, I can feel the air coming out of it, but uh, the noise from it is not too bad. Now once this heat dish is warmed up, it's drawing a little bit less power, it says 1025 watts. But my smart plug says 1000 watts, so there is a difference of opinion. And checking with a kilowatt, it says 1008 watts. So the truth is probably somewhere in between. And with a higher discharge rate, we did about the same. Again, a uh, voltage drop towards the end when we were about to run out of battery. And we got 850 watt hours out of it this time. I repeated my test a few more times and the best I was able to get at is 876 watt hours at 350 watts of discharge. At 60 watts, I got substantially less energy out because that test took a very long time to discharge. And basically the device was using up a fair bit of its own energy just running the inverter over that long period. And charging it again. Well, it's just over 50 minutes that's been charging. It's only at 64%, not the 80% it was supposed to get. But I'm wondering if this is because maybe I got the battery pack warm with that rapid discharge at 1000 watts before. So, I don't know, it doesn't always hit 80% at 50 minutes in. So, looking at the temperature with this thing here, there's a very warm spot right up here. That's probably where the uh, inverter charging circuitry is. Warm where the fan is, of course. And on the bottom, you can see exactly where the cylindrical cells are in here. And I also graphed it when it was charging it was hot. That's this line here, so it didn't charge as hard. Took longer, 80% uh, was about right here, hour and eight minutes, and then it finished at an hour and a half. Now this power station can also charge off of a car using this cigarette lighter socket while the car is running, otherwise it'll just drain the car battery. And I'm just testing this right now with a benchtop power supply instead of a car. And right now I have that set to 11.2 volts and it's drawing 9.17 amperes. And it says here it's charging at 96 watts. Now it can also charge off of solar cells and the cable for connecting to solar cells plugs into the exact same port because this thing has its own peak power point tracker which also works off of a car battery and with solar cells you typically have a current voltage curve that goes something like this where the current is constant until you get a certain voltage and it drops off and you want to maximize the product of the two so you find the point which should be right about here where 
essentially the product of current and voltage is maximum and it kind of keeps hunting around for that and interestingly enough it's doing that with this power supply too so if I crank up the voltage here that doesn't actually increase the voltage right away but this thing is figuring out slowly that it can let the voltage go up a little bit and as a result get more power out of it so now it's still increasing and you can see the power it's able to get out is increasing slowly as well and now it's found the peak point and it keeps playing around with the voltage uh, moving it up and down trying to figure out if it can improve on that and now if I drop the voltage on the power supply a little bit that dropped the current by a lot and now this thing is figuring out the new voltage and current that works best now back at maximum voltage we're charging 145 watts crank the voltage down a fair bit and now we're down to 99 watts and now it's adjusting to a new voltage to figure out what's best for that and we're at 132 watts which is all I can get at that voltage let's play around uh, let's change the current limit to 4 amperes and now there that's dropped to that much and this is now at 45 watts I think the voltage stayed the same so it's already at the optimal point for that now my power voltage curve changes a bit if I put say a 1 ohm resistor in series but I don't have a suitable 1 ohm resistor so I'm gonna use my circular saw as a resistor by wiring that in series and now it's figuring out the optimal voltage to run that off of but as it draws too much current through the saw the saw starts to spin up and that causes more of a voltage drop which means now the optimal point has changed so once it's run up the saw it's uh, becoming more sensitive to current so it will slowly drop the current again which will give it more voltage right now it's still increasing but as that saw runs faster it has more voltage drop so now it's dropping the current which will give it more voltage and the saw is starting to run more slowly and then once that saw stalls out then it'll start to crank up the current again so current is now on the rise again until the saw starts up again and then the cycle just repeats Now, what else is there to say about this power station? Well, these guys actually sent me a list of talking points, so uh, fast 50 minute charging. Results may vary, indeed, but uh, covered. Push battery capacity with U-Turbo, uh, I already covered that. 100 watts with USB-C and A ports, um, I haven't talked about that, but uh, yeah, it says that on the front too. Three times safety and long lasting, so over 3000 cycles because it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. That's a newer technology that's a slightly lower power density than uh, the older lithium ions. Those are not the sort of batteries that you've seen videos of batteries blowing up, so uh, much safer. And on that front, this thing having a carrying handle gives me some peace of mind because if something bad were to happen, I can always just grab it by the handle and get it out of there. Easy app control. There is a mobile app to go with this thing as well. It took me a while to realize, but uh, you need to turn the IoT thing on. To connect and I'm connecting to it via Bluetooth because Wi-Fi often isn't available in places where you have no power. There it says 90% which indeed it has and mostly you can see what's going on here and you can change some settings um, like child protection, battery preservation mode. Okay actually I kind of like this one. Or I can change the DC charging current because if I'm charging off a car for example I might want to set that to something less than 8 amperes. Charge essential devices even when power station is at zero battery. Fast solar charging, fully charged in four hours. So I don't have solar cells and my power supply is not beefy enough to crank it quite that much, but I think I did demonstrate the solar charging feature even without solar cells. And purchase coupon and code, see the links on the screen right now. So overall it works pretty good for its size. But uh, like other power stations, it has some trouble starting larger power tools because of the current surge. But uh, overall, I like it. It's nice and portable. And there's a list of purchase locations and discount codes right here.